Over the years, I've tackled many Astra Militarum regiments, Praetorians, Steel Legion, Maccabean Janissaries, and Valhallans. But with the arrival of the new infantry design for the Astra Militarum, I think it's time to revisit a few of those conversions, whilst also looking at some new ones too. And the first of this new generation of kit bashes are the Talon Desert Raiders. Naturally, I started with a new Cadian infantry sprue and removed from it the parts required for the torso and the legs of a trooper. After cleaning the parts of any mold lines or sprue tabs, the legs and torso were then glued together. With the basis of this conversion prepped, I could begin with the first modification. While the Talon feature inspirations from a number of different real-world examples, I've always thought that the army, especially in more modern depictions, bore a strong similarity to the Ottoman army of the earlier 20th century. Another force that shares inspiration from this period are the Death Corps of Krieg, and so borrowing one of their weapons for this kit bash just made good sense. However, the Krieg torsos are quite different from the New Cadians, so some modifications were required. After a quick comparison, I found that the torso was correctly scaled for the arms. A number of the straps and pouches across the chest were getting in the way though, so these were carefully shaved back a little. With these first modifications, another comparison was made, which revealed that the left arm also needed to be trimmed back to allow it to fit. And so this back and forth of comparing and trimming continued until everything was lining up nicely, at which point the arms were glued into place. One of the most iconic features of the Talon are their head wraps. Now, there are a number of third-party bits that you can use here, but many fail to interact with the torso and the shoulders around them, so I decided to make my own. This started out as a regular Cadian head taken from the new sprue. To make room for the wrap, the helmet was clipped back considerably. The sides, back, top and front of the helmet were all trimmed back to create a much smaller profile. From here, the cuts were cleaned up and rounded out a little using my knife. To create the wrappings themselves, some green stuff would be used. After mixing up a batch, a small amount was first added to the top of the head. The green stuff was then smoothed down so that it rounded out over the top of the head once again, albeit a little bit smaller than before. For the strip of cloth that would hang below the chin, a thin strand of rolled green stuff was hung from each of the ears and allowed to rest against the guardsman's collarbone. Then I scoured a series of folds and creases using the sharp tipped sculpting tool. As always, I'd highly recommend the little Vaseline here, just to help prevent the green stuff from sticking to your tools. After the initial folds were in place, the putty was smoothed out and the folds were softened slightly by using some rubber tipped sculpting tools. With the section of hanging cloth in place, the small amount of green stuff that was added to the top of the head could have a few shallow folds added, just to give it the appearance of cloth. Finally, the last wrapping that I added was applied across the brow and around the back of the head. Again, a thin sausage of green stuff was rolled out that was long enough to be wrapped around the whole head. Once in place, more folds and creases were scoured in using a combination of my metal and rubber tipped tools. And with that, the wrappings were complete, but before I could continue, the green stuff was left to cure overnight. Now that the head was in place, the bedroll could be glued to the backpack. And to this, I decided to add a Tempesta Sire knife. In many of the artistic depictions of the Talon, they often carry ornate looking blades, and this particular piece should be easily accessible for any Astra Militarum players. It just needed a quick trim so they could fit against the backpack, and with that, the knife was glued into place. But one thing I'd failed to notice earlier was the chin strap. While it wasn't imperative to remove this, the head would look better if this was trimmed back to appear as though it was just another strip of cloth. Admittedly, this would have been much easier to have done earlier, but sometimes you don't always know what does and doesn't work until you're a little way into the process. So, learn from my mistakes here and make those adjustments earlier on. Now, before we go on with the painting, let's first hear from the sponsors of this video, G2A. G2A is a global marketplace dedicated to digital products. Regardless if you're in the need of full games, add-ons or gift cards, G2A is a great place for anyone who loves video games but can't afford to buy them at full price as often as they would want to. G2A's catalog is huge and covers a wide array of genres and platforms across various regions, so chances are you'll find exactly what you want and for less than you thought. Fancy playing some classic Dawn of War? Well then pick up the Dawn of War Master Collection for almost as cheaply as the Blood Ravens acquire their relics from other chapters. 
or maybe you prefer something a bit more modern. G2A has you covered with Chaos Gate Demon Hunters for a price so slashed you'd think it had been done in with a Nemesis Force weapon. But that's not all. To celebrate the World Cup, G2A has also made a mini game that you can play to earn yourself even more savings. All you need to do is score a few goals and you can claim your reward. So give it a go yourself by heading on over to G2A.com or by following my link down in the description below. A big thank you to G2A for sponsoring this video. To kick off the painting of this Talon Desert Raider, I began with an all over coat of black primer. This was applied through my airbrush, but a regular rattle can would work too. This would create a good surface to apply the rest of the paint onto. To give myself a little help with the shading, I decided to do a bit of pre-shading by spraying a little grey paint over the top of the model through my airbrush. As with all the paints in this video, I chose Carcaridon Grey from the Tooth and Coats range. After being mixed with a little thinner, the paint was lightly sprayed from above so that it accumulated mainly on the upper surfaces and kept the recesses dark. This step isn't necessary, but it massively helps when trying to achieve realistic shading on your miniatures. Now for each of the areas on the model, I would approach them in the exact same way. By first applying a base coat, followed by a couple of highlights. Each of the base coats were mixed in with a little water and applied in two thin coats. The first of these was Wyvern Green, and this was used as a base coat for the trousers. After applying the first layer and allowing it to dry, I then applied a second in order to achieve a good solid base coat. These thinner layers would also allow that pre-shading to show through, creating the effect of shadows in the folds of the cloth. The highlights of this model would be created by mixing in some trooper white into the base coat colour in order to create a lighter version of the base colour. This lighter mixture was applied in thin lines across the edges and raised details. The lighter colour also helps to further separate the darker, recessed colours from the raised details, making them more prominent in turn. Following the first highlight, more trooper white was added to the mix in order to create an even lighter version of the base colour. This lighter paint was applied to the same details as last time, but in smaller spots than before. By focusing these onto corners and sharp points, it further helped to emphasize the details and add depth to the model. Continuing the same steps as before, the next areas to tackle were the jacket, bedroll and gaiters. To give them that sandy appearance, all of these areas were base coated with some dragon fang. As with the trousers, the sandy coloured areas were then highlighted with two progressively lighter mixtures of Dragon Fang and Trooper White. The first highlight was applied across all the raised edges, and the second was focused onto just the sharp points. However, after completing these areas, I found that the recesses were a little too light and had lost some of the shading. To help bring this back, I mixed up a glaze of cuirass leather by thinning it down heavily with water to create a translucent paint. This glaze was focused into the recessed areas, where it subtly adjusted and darkened down the tan coloration, helping to restore some of that recess shading. After the glazing was complete, I could continue with the other areas of the model. The first of these was the armor, equipment, and the rifle. These were all base coated with Death Reaper. I was a little unsure about what color to paint the armor, as the original Talon models don't feature much in the way of it. What they did have was usually painted as gunmetal or dark grey, so that style was replicated here. These dark grey areas were then highlighted with two mixtures of Death Reaper and Trooper White. To give the rifle a slightly more archaic look, I decided to give the butt of the last gun a wooden appearance. This was created by first applying a base coat of Scorched Earth. Two highlight mixtures were then created, but rather than highlighting just the edges, a wood grain effect was instead created by applying a series of horizontal lines, using a combination of both highlight mixes to do so. The boots, backpack, gloves and other leather areas were the next areas to be tackled, and these were all base coated with Ancient Forest. And like before, these areas were given a couple of highlights of Ancient Forest and Trooper White. For the small amount of exposed flesh on the show, I applied a base coat of Dwarven Skin, before adopting the usual highlights of Dwarven Skin and Trooper White. But, like with the sandy coloured cloth, the skin was a little too bright in the recesses, so a Barbarian Brawn Glaze was mixed up before being applied into the recesses. 
After painting the face, I could then begin painting the cloth wrapping around the head. This was started off with a base coat of ivory tusk. As this is such a light paint, you may find that a couple of thin layers are required to get the best coverage possible. Then, to highlight, some trooper white was used on its own. The ivory tusk base coat was light enough already, so I didn't need to mix in the trooper white this time around. The final step was the metallics, but I wanted more of a subtle black and steel effect rather than a bright reflective silver. So, some plate armor was applied as an edge highlight across the metallic details. These included parts of the rifle, the blade, and a few of the small details like buttons and canteens. By limiting the application to the edges, it gave these areas the appearance of being worn back to bare metal. With the model itself completed, work could begin on the base. Naturally, I wanted a desert appearance, so some of AK Interactive's sandy desert texture paste was used. This was applied to the base and layered in such a way to create an uneven surface. To give the base that dusty, desert look, I chose to apply some pigment. This light tan powder was simply dusted across the base and around the lower legs with a regular old brush. Here it accumulated into some of the recesses, but also settled on the flat surfaces. The result was more of that dusty texture that I was looking to create. For display models, it's not often necessary to fix pigments, but if you're looking to game with them, then you can hold them into place a little better by applying a small amount of thinners. This will just tone down that dusty appearance somewhat, but the result will be much more hard wearing. By this stage, all I was left to do now was to clean up the room of the base with some Doom Death Black, and give everything a coat of matte varnish to seal in the paintwork. And with that, the model was complete. And so that concludes this guide on converting the new Astra Militarum infantry to represent members of the Talon Desert Raiders. Now compared to some of my other guides, this one was kept intentionally simpler so the results could be replicated across a larger force. In fact, even if you decide to forego the rifle swap completely, just the green stuff work and knife would be enough to give your own Astra Militarum force a unique look. If you enjoyed this guide, then be sure to check out my previous Valhalla and Sentinel and Kill Team builds, and if you have any suggestions for which iconic regiments I should tackle next, then leave me your suggestions below. As always, I'll include all the paints and kits used to create this guide in the description below, along with some affiliates links that'll help to support my work. Now before I go, let me say a big thank you to the ever wonderful patrons who keep this channel going especially my expert tier and above supporters who are Jack Ewan, Jonathan Hart, Tim, Brushlicker Nim, Daniel Dowling, Jesse Smith, Joachim Falk, Casper Limborg, Morgan, Mr. Grimm, Pale Juice, Swedsman, and The Googles. If you're interested in supporting me too, you can find a link to my Patreon below, where supporters can get ad-free access to my videos, sneak peeks, a private Discord channel, and exclusive merchandise. But you'll be helping me out in the process. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.